This lesson will use a Desmos animation to make the connection between the cosine and sine function values on the unit circle and their graphs on the coordinate plane. Remember on the unit circle x is equal to cosine theta and y is equal to sine theta. You can find the file I'm going to use by searching online for Desmos sine and cosine animation or just by typing in the URL listed at the bottom of the screen. When graphing the cosine and sine function values on the coordinate plane, the key points on the unit circle are where the quadrantal angles intersect the unit circle, which are the points 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1, negative 1 comma 0, and 0 comma negative 1. And again, remember on the unit circle, x is equal to cosine theta and y is equal to sine theta. So if we take a look at one revolution around the unit circle, at zero radians, the cosine function value is one. At pi over two radians, the cosine function value is zero. At pi radians, the cosine function value is negative one. At three halves pi radians, the cosine function value is zero. And then at two pi radians, the cosine function value is back at positive one. So now let's animate a point around the unit circle and look at the graph of the basic cosine function on the coordinate plane at the same time. We will see the point on the unit circle in blue and we'll see the point on the basic cosine function on the coordinate plane in purple. So again, keep in mind the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle is giving us the cosine function value on the purple graph. Let's do that again and focus on the five key points to graph one period of the basic cosine function. At zero radians, the cosine function value is one, indicated by the ordered pair zero comma one. As the angle increases from zero to pi over two radians, notice on the unit circle, x will decrease from one to zero, which gives us the first one-fourth of the graph of the basic cosine function in purple. As theta increases from pi over two to pi radians, the x-coordinate on the unit circle will decrease from zero to negative one, which gives us the first half of one period of the graph of y equals cosine theta. As theta increases from pi to three halves pi, the x-coordinate is now going to increase from negative one to zero. So notice how the graph is back on the x-axis when theta is equal to three halves pi radians. And then finally, as theta increases from three halves pi to two pi, the x-coordinate will increase from zero to one, giving us the final piece of one period of the graph of the cosine function. And then from here, the graph just repeats. So again, when graphing one period of the basic cosine function, we take the period and create four equal subintervals. We begin with a max, midline, minimum, midline, and max. And now let's take a look at the graph of the basic sine function. And again, if we look at the sine function values for the quadrantal angles starting at zero radians, the sine function value is equal to zero. At pi over two radians, the sine function value is equal to one. At pi radians, the sine function value is equal to zero. At three halves pi radians, the sine function value is equal to negative one. And then at two pi radians, the sine function value is back at zero. As we animate the point around the unit circle, we will see the graph of the basic sine function in green. Again, the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle is giving us the sine function value graphed in green. Now let's go back and do that again and just focus on the quadrantal angles. So at zero radians, the sine function value is equal to zero, giving us the point zero comma zero for the graph of the basic sine function. As theta increases from zero to pi over two, the sine function value is going to increase from zero to one, which gives us the green piece of the sine function graph. As theta increases from pi over two to pi radians, the y-coordinate or sine function value will decrease from one to zero. 
giving us this piece of the graph of the sine function. As theta increases from pi to 3 halves pi, the y-coordinate or sine function value is going to decrease from 0 to negative 1, which gives us this piece of the graph of the sine function. And then as theta increases from 3 halves pi radians to 2 pi radians, the y-coordinate or sine function value will increase from negative 1 back to 0. And we have one complete graph of one period of the sine function. And then from here, it just repeats. So in graphing one period of the basic sine function, we take one period, divide it into four subintervals, and the pattern for the basic sine function is midline, maximum, midline, minimum, midline. And just for the fun of it, let's animate the cosine and sine function values at the same time as the point animates around the unit circle twice. So we have the graph of the cosine function in purple, and we have the graph of the sine function in green. Remember on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta. I hope you found this helpful.